from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. This is Spaceflight Insider's live launch coverage of NASA's Exploration Flight Test 1, featuring Jason Ryan, Shuttle Astronaut Robert Springer, Astronaut Abby, Sawyer Rosenstein, and Causeway correspondent Sean Costello. We now go live to the Kennedy Space Center press site for Spaceflight Insider's coverage of EFT-1. Hey there, Spaceflight Insider fans. Jason Ryan with SpaceflightInsider.com. I'm very fortunate to be joined by one Myron Fletcher with Boeing. Now, Myron, you work for one of the big dog daddy companies of aerospace. I mean, you guys are designing not just the CST-100 commercial crew transportation vehicle, CST-100, but you're building most of the components for the space launch system. Um, how old are you? I am 23 years old. And you're there. So I am. You're, 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 uh, give, the, give our guests, I mean, give our viewers uh, your official title. So I am a rocket propulsion engineer. This guy. <laughs> I mean, now, as a rocket propulsion engineer, what does your job entail? So my job entails um, pretty much what Boeing calls as a RE, which is a responsible engineer, which is equivalent to a project engineer for another company. Um, in specific, I'm responsible for two components, one being the LOX and LH-2 debris screen, and the other one being the LOX and LH-2 feed lines. So I'm responsible for those two components. And what I mean by responsible is design, build, qualification, test of those components. So we see it from the beginning of the design stage until the end, until it's ready to be put on the rocket at MAF. Now, when you're doing that, I mean, do they, a lot of the systems I know are, are legacy, but of course, under the new configuration with SLS, they've got to be very much different also. So, I mean, you're 23. How do you go from going to college to be working on the next rocket that's going to launch crews to orbit? I mean, do you, is it kind of like other jobs where you come in and you, uh, you know, you, you, someone takes you under their wing and they walk you around or... How did that work for you? How did you do that? So engineering in itself to me means we saw problems that we didn't even know existed. And so when you come into a company, you, you're going you're gonna, to, as an engineer, you're expecting to have the most difficult problem you could possibly ever have. And so being, when I came in, they recognized my potential. They recognized what I could do. And they said, well, let's go ahead and put them in this position. And so they just kind of threw you in the deep end to see, see how you, and see if you sink or swim. They, well, it wasn't a sink or swim. I do, I do, have, a, I do have a lead engineer right, who, who's right. there with me, and I have other responsible engineers who've been there a little longer than I have to give me guidance along so the way. So as they saw that you could, give, you could take on more things, and they, 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 you basically grew with the, with the position as you Absolutely. got hired. Absolutely. Now, where did you go to college at? I graduated from Tuskegee University. Um, I, made, I double majored in aerospace engineering and physics, and I got a minor in mathematics. So I'm all over the place. How long did you, was it when you left college, when you graduated, to when you were working for Boeing? Two months. You got picked up two months after you left college? I actually had a job offer with Boeing. Before you left? In November of my, of my senior year. Now, what did, that, what did that say to you when you were, when, I mean, how did that feel? What was that like? And, and no, I got a, I got a follow-up question to that too, by the way. Okay, it, it was amazing. Um, one of the biggest things for seniors, you know, especially engineers, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's a very competitive field, very competitive. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're in your senior year, that, that fall semester, you're, you know, you're looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. And one thing that um, Bo companies like Boeing, they do, they seek out talent early so they can grab those talents before everybody else tries to come in and grab you. So they and, try um, to get the best and brightest. They get the best and brightest. Absolutely. It's the same way with college. Harvard, right. you don't you don't apply for Harvard in March. Harvard you apply applies for, Harvard. for you. Exactly, yeah. you know. So it's the same way with Boeing. So I mean, they're, they're, I call them the, the, the Harvard of the aerospace industry. Now my, my follow-up question that was, okay, you went to college to be an aerospace engineer. You were one of the ones that when you entered college, I mean, I know a lot of kids when they went to college, they're figuring themselves out and they're like, well, no, I'm going to change my major, you know. Mm -hmm. Even when I was in college, I went in for public relations and I found out that I, but I believe in finishing when I started, so I got my, 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 my four year in, in public relations, I said, but I want to do journalism. Okay. So I, I got a dual major. Now mm -hmm. for you, did you enter? As an aerospace engineer? I did. I did. Actually, um, the, the, my aerospace engineering career, I wanted to be a pilot for as long really? as I can remember. I wanted to be a pilot, and I was always fascinated with space. I grew up right down the street from Little Rock International Airport. That was my question. Did you all, did you, when you entered college for aerospace engineering, was it your intent to be working on space exploration? So, 
I had a desire to do something with space. I, you it didn't was, know what it was? I didn't know what it was at, at the, in my high school level career. Mm -hmm. My brother became an electrical engineer and I was like, and he said, Myron, you know, I know you want to be a pilot, but why not design them and fly them at the same time? And I said, who in the world designs and flies them at the same time? He That's said, right. aerospace engineers. Yeah. And I said, aerospace, I'm going to look into that. So I began to look into it. I searched out many different schools. Um, Tuskegee was, was my favorite. It's seven to one student to teacher ratio. I mean, it was, it was, it was a no-brainer. So here I am today living my dream. So. Now, what, what was that like? I mean, when you, what, for those young people out there that are watching right now, and you're going through, you're about ready, or maybe they're about ready, like, you know, you met Abby. Mm -hmm. she's, she's about ready to go to college. What is that like when you leave high school and you go into college and you're getting ready to to do something that's so complex and so difficult? Such a, I mean, you have one of the most difficult curriculum, I would imagine, that's out there. It is. It is. Aerospace engineering is very um, difficult. I can give you the ratio at T Tuskegee. It was 50 of us that came in my freshman year. Two of us graduated my senior year. And, you and that's them. that's just Tuskegee. So when I talk to friends from Georgia Tech and all over the place, they tell me it's the same ratio with them. They're they're bigger classes. So basically, you ratio, have a a four percent graduation rate because it's fifty to two and a hundred to four. Yep. So it'd be a four ninety six percent washout. Yep. And and most of the time, I mean, people think aerospace engineering is one thing, but then when you get to understand what it is, you you actually know if that's what you want to do or not. And most people think aerospace engineers <laughs> they fly. Or they think they do these other type of things, but they don't really understand that aerospace engineering is a, it's a specific field, and they don't they don't get the full grasp until they get into like their sophomore year of college. Did you have any doubts when you were going through? Absolutely, degree? absolutely. I wanted to give up a, quite a few times, but I was motivated. I knew I, I knew I wanted to be a rocket scientist. I knew right. that from the get go, and um, even though it was difficult, I knew that if I weathered the if I weathered the trial, I would make it through, and I'm, I'm here today. As a, as a living witness so it was plenty of times classes where they say oh you can't pass this class you're gonna have to take it two or three times to pass it and by the grace of God I passed all of my classes one shot in uh, really? four years I made it out in four years with two degrees so oh you got aerospace engineering what was your second physics degree? physics mm -hmm. you're a physicist yes <laughs> god I'm so lame I got a public <laughs> relations of journalism I got aerospace engineering a physics I I'm just destroyed. Uh, <laughs> so you're working on SLS right now, right? Yep. And do you do anything with uh, Boeing's other launch vehicles, like with uh, the Delta IV, for example? I don't. I don't do anything. You're, you're I'm focused specific on, on SLS. SLS. Yep. Now, what is that like? I mean, you know, we, we talked to John Elbon, I guess your boss, mm -hmm. earlier, and he was like, you know, describing, it, and I, I tried to help a bit because a lot of people have this, you know, this misconception like, oh, well, you're buying these big rockets. Well, they don't understand. It's like you're not buying the rocket. You're, well, you're getting the rocket, but you also, you got to build all of this stuff and the support structure, the, the welding tools that are at the map. I mean, these big, ginormous building size welding tools. And can you give us an idea, maybe something specific that you can highlight to our viewers about that kind of gives them a, a sense of scale of what it's like to work on SLS and, you know, something specific about it. So for Boeing in specific, we're the prime contractors for the core stage. Right. So that consists of the locks and LH2 tanks. Um, pretty much the we're the, the life of the rocket, pretty much. Without us, you don't have any fuel without and I pretty much I call myself a plumber. I'm pretty much the guy who's who's pushing all the fluid to the engines. That's mm -hmm. what I call myself at work. Um, so what you're looking at is an integration of many suppliers, many different Boeing companies across the nation, many Boeing centers across the nation. So it's a lot that goes on and and to know that we all work together on so many different parts. It just it just blows my mind the integration that it takes for a project like this. Just it's amazing. Now that, that's something else for for stuff like today. This is this is special for you guys. You're spending most of your time in the in the trenches working on the and on the equipment, developing the rockets and the the LOX tanks, the, the liquid hydrogen tanks, and you're I mean you get to come out and poke your head up every once in a while and, and do this kind of stuff, but you're spending most of your days working on, on getting the rocket to fly in 2018. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is an honor and a privilege to be able to, to see Orion and see what we're actually going to carry. You know, to me, this is, it's, it's humbling to see that this is, this is the capsule that we're going to carry, that SLS is going to carry to Mars one day. Now, to that, you work at a Huntsville. Now, you're an engin aerospace engineer. How did you get tapped to come down and, and do the, the media events and stuff like this? So I was, I was selected um, by my they communication group. just said, hey, group. you. <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I, all I can tell you is I was selected by my communications group, and um, they asked if I was available, and I told them I was, and 
here I am today. I was on. I actually came down for a panel called "New Faces of Exploration," so that was a pretty that, cool. That, that kind of helped, I guess, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, the one thing that you can, I will let you choose. That, that I ask a lot of people. I haven't done it much today. I think I did it with one other person. Is there's a lot of misconceptions and preconceived notions about SLS. Some of them are somewhat validated. Some other are not. I'm sure you've heard some of these. If there's one thing that you would like to clear up, and one thing you'd like our, our viewers to know about Space Launch System, what would it be? That it is not a paper rocket, because m most people think it's a paper rocket. They're like, SLS and NASA, you know, they start a program and then they shut it down. SLS is much more advanced than any other you guys rocket we've had. We, we actually are, you know, and most people don't recognize that. And like I told people yesterday, you know, you can Google this. This isn't a secret project. You know, I mean, you can see hardware actually being built. When I go out to my suppliers, you know, I actually get to touch the hardware that we designed. You know, so I mean, things, it's, work is being made. Progress is being made. And um, we're on schedule and on budget. You're still going for 2018, right, man? Yeah, we are. We are. 2018. They're going to build her rocket. You can't see her, but she's there. <laughs> well, Myron, I know that you got a lot of other stuff to do today, and then are you going to be back out tomorrow? I will be. Well, we hope maybe have you on then. We're, we're right now we're we're working out some other stuff that we got to do logistically. We got a lot of stuff to do. We got a lot of great interviews and stuff lined up, but we're trying to make sure everything works just right for the second launch attempt. And uh, and that's uh, more people like this. I mean, this is why we're here. All right, guys, this is the kind of people we want to be involved, young people that think space is awesome and that they understand the value, the importance of it, and they're willing to basically dedicate your lives and, and you know, go into college and pursue careers long term for this kind of thing, specifically for space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much.